Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Dr. Brett Schur. I'm the medical director at dietdoctor.com. I want to tell you about a new study that we just posted a news post on. Francisca Spritzler wrote um, uh, about this study that Professor Tim Noakes, none other, than, none other than Professor Tim Noakes and his colleagues in South Africa did, a real-world study looking at a low-carb ketogenic diet and its effect on diabetes. And as Francisca said in her post, it's kind of, it's been a good year for, for low carb and for keto. First, the American Diabetes Association endorses it as a treatment for, uh, for diabetes. There have been a number of big time, um, big conference presentations about it and more and more evidence coming out. And now we have this real world data. Um, out of South Africa. And what they did, let me tell you a little bit about this study. Um, there were 28 people enrolled, 24 uh, completed the study for 15 months, so a little over a year. The average hemoglobin A1C was 7.5, which is solidly in the, the diabetic range. And after the 15 months, the average was 5.8%. I mean, that's a remarkable um, improvement, 7.5 to 5.8%. And here's here's a great part. Seven of the participants had complete remission of their diabetes, which means they stopped all medications and their A1C was normal at less than 5.7. And then there were seven others who did a partial um, remission where the A1C was less than 6.5. Uh, and they were only on metformin, 11 people who were on insulin, eight completely discontinued insulin. And as we know, insulin is expensive, causes weight gain. It can, it can just further this process of insulin resistance by having more insulin. So getting off insulin, I think is such an important treatment and eight out of 11 completely got off of it. And that's pretty amazing. And, and of those who were newly diagnosed, their A1C was 9.5 and went down to 5.5. So some pretty dramatic findings in 15 months with the only intervention being a low-carb ketogenic diet. Now, of course, this was a non-randomized, non-controlled study, right? So there was no control group. Everybody got the same intervention. It was not blinded, obviously. So some people would say, look, this doesn't prove anything that's not good science. And in, in a sense, they're right. This doesn't prove it's better than any other intervention. But here's the thing. If you're a doctor looking for a way to treat a patient, you want to know that something works in real life, right? Whether something works in a metabolic ward or a test tube or a cell culture is important. It has its own reasons for being done. So you understand the mechanism, but knowing that it works in a real life setting is also very important. So whereas this isn't the highest level and the highest standard of evidence, it still contributes and contributes importantly to our knowledge and to a clinician's ability to be confident that this type of intervention works. Now we would need to compare it to a low fat intervention group or a Mediterranean intervention group along the same lines where they were randomized to know that it works better. So this, this study didn't say it works better, but boy, did it say it works and it works well. And for some people, that's all they need. That's all they need for. So for that person, this is a great study to look at, to say, okay, this is something I can do to treat my patients to almost completely reverse their diabetes in the majority of the patients, um, and to reduce their medications and to get them feeling better and improve their life and improve their health. So hats off to professor Tim Noakes and his crew from South Africa for doing this study. Uh, check out dietdoctor.com to read the whole post by Francisco, which was very good. And of course, subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. So you'll get all our updates. All right. I'll be back with more, uh, low carb and health news on the next one. Take care.